Hey everybody, what's going on? It's me, William Tackett, here with another match breakdown between me and Cade Ritolo in the finals of the ADCC Trials in 2020. So this was an outstanding match, probably one of my favorite matches to date because we just were going crazy. Now this is not the full match, this is the highlights here, so you'll notice Cade there hitting a nice two-on-one foot sweep. Me looking to invert underneath now with that false reap position as it's now known and called. I'm looking for that front headlock control off the false reap, trying to score those points. As you may notice, ADCC, there's points. from Sometimes from the beginning, if it's the finals, it's important to get on top and because you can't pull guard. So me there now looking for that outside Ashigurami there and um, trying to figure for my legs and pass to a 50-50 to hopefully get on top to a scoring position. I noticed in this match, I th thought my best bet was to be try to get on top and get to a passing position. So you might notice my guard being a little bit more active, less of trying to submit off of my back, more of trying to get on top and score. As you see here, me looking to come up with that body lock off that leg exchange, but Kate is just so good off of that wizard. Really, really good off of that overhook, looking to always hit that Uchimata and rolling through for the legs. It's very tough to come on top with a body lock against them. Now, as you see here, I was in that half guard position and we changed sides. Now I'm able to sit up here with my underhook and hit kind of, I wouldn't call it my signature, but it's definitely my favorite half guard sweep where I can lock my hands in that S grip around their leg and start focusing on switching my legs to, as you can notice, now get that bend in their knee. So then I can rock up and hit that nice half guard sweep. My favorite sweep to date, to be honest. And um, now this is where I got a little bit nervous because <laughs> Cade threw up a buggy choke. And if you've seen any of Cade Ritolo's matches lately, he does a ton of buggy chokes. He submitted some really high light level guys like Cole Franson, PJ Barch, and he started to do it to me here. And I knew if I worked my way to side control, he was going to be able to figure for his legs and get the finish. So I just stayed in half guard and really tried to put a lot of pressure down on his face just to make it uncomfortable for him and make it to where I could pull my head out and work my way into a good position. But I was able to free my head there and settle into a half guard. And this is where I made a mistake and allowed him to kind of lock up his, his arms there on my head and not allowed me to settle. I was still able to maintain top position, but I wasn't able to settle into a nice pass. As you can see here now, I'm trying to pin that leg to the ground with that knee staple and really just start putting pressure on him. I don't think it's points quite yet, but I was really trying to just get to a good position where I could just hold him and look for scoring. He's able to invert through and get back to his guard. I'm trying to keep continue with that knee slice, keep putting the pressure on him, not allow him to get back to his feet. He's always pulling down on people's heads. That's something the Ritolo brothers do so well. They do such a good job at pulling down your partner's head and making you exhausted. Now here there was points. I do remember because I was in a good position to start passing. I landed in half guard. I didn't have the underhook, but I had really good shoulder pressure here. So I was able to work my way into pass. And if I would have secured these points, then I would have won the match. But I was able to hold for just a few seconds until he caught my foot and not quite enough to get the points. So I didn't get the points and that didn't lead to me winning the match. But I was still able to get a nice little attack there and work my way into side control. One thing I probably would have done differently is circle to his hips to prevent him from Cap capturing my leg. Me going towards his head a little bit gave him the space to move his hips and catch my foot. As you can see here, we're hitting some wrestling exchanges and I was able to enter in onto his, his leg and work around to a body lock here and try to drag him down to the mat. But again, so good on that overhook is Cade. Amazing with that wizard and probably even better at not letting his back get taken. Notice him already putting his hands on the ground, blocking my hands from wrapping around his waist and scooting his hips to the floor. Now he scored off of this because in ADCC, if a position starts standing and lands on the floor, you get two points. It doesn't matter if you initiated the takedown or not. So I didn't know I was behind here because I wasn't for sure of the rules, but now I know. And he scored. So I was really trying to get back on top here and get those points back because I think there was only a few minutes left in the match before we went into overtime. As you see Cade there chasing for my heel, and I was able to heel slip and rock on the top position. From here, I was able to settle in almost like a leg drag and um, stay really nice and heavy. From here, I was able to get my two points and settle into this leg drag. And it was really a bummer for me because the match ended here. I felt like if I could have maintained this position, I was on my way to passing the guard. And I would have liked to say get the finish, but you never would know. But we ended up ending the match from here. He had that figure four on my leg preventing me from taking my leg out. And I had that nice shoulder pressure with that arm trying, arm trying to grip in the leg drag. So we reset standing. This was now the overtime. Points from the beginning. No guard pulling allowed. So you can only pull guard if you enter in on a shot. So I was really trying to desperately get into on his legs so I could get to a position where I was comfortable. 
from here. Really, no, we were exhausted at this point, so that wasn't a great single leg attempt, but I was able to use it to pull my guard because I was able to attack it for more than three seconds. So I was able to land inside my half guard, which is a position I'm comfortable with and I've used since I was a blue belt. So um, as you can see here, I'm really trying to work with that underhook and come on top, but it's a little risky against them because they're so good at that overhook and really good at attacking Darius's. So I was trying to be patient and also I was just exhausted. So as you can see me holding that opposite foot and rocking the top position, I almost scored here, but he was able to get back on top once again. So no points there for me. I. Uh, just was really tired and couldn't get back up to my feet but you know I settled back into my clothes guard which I'm also comfortable with playing some clothes guard I uh, did a lot of clothes guard when I was a kid I had longer legs so it was easy for me to play clothes guard but as you can see there Ty was or Cade was going for a Doris inside the clothes guard which is a very unorthodox thing to do but in my opinion it kind of gave him um, a little lead in the judges eyes because you know they're judging overtime right now here he is going for some passing they, that's just kind of their signature style passing, forcing you to like an inverted scenario and throwing your legs up. Now this is where I made a mistake. I was able to hit this submission against Dante Leon a few months back. So I was confident in doing it against Cade, but maybe a little too overconfident at the end of the match because I believe I was winning up until this point. And then by going for this submission, taking that risk, I put myself in this bad spot here where I was stuck in this leg drag. Kind of similar, honestly, the exact same scenario just on the opposite side of the end of the regulation. I had Cade here and now he has me here. So he had me in this leg drag scenario. I was able to turn. He threw on a rear naked choke from here. It didn't have the right angle to get a choke, but it might have been enough to show the judges that he was attacking and, um, you know, weigh that decision out a little bit. But I was able to insert that far butterfly hook and get back to my guard. And I knew there was short time, probably 10 seconds left. So I just was really trying to get up and score because here it is zero to zero. I come up on the double leg. As I come up, the bell rings and he tosses me. And there it is, the end of the match. Really, really great match. Again, my favorite match to date probably. Um, we left it all out there. We were exhausted. At this point, the child is chanting one more round, like, as in one more overtime round. And to be honest, I was hoping that, even though I was exhausted and didn't want to do another round, I was hoping we were because, um, you know, I knew that I wasn't going to win that decision because everything that happened at the end of the match was key. Um, I was more to the beginning of the match. And, you know, refs don't really remember the beginning of the match, mostly the end. So next time, just got to go out there, fight a little harder towards the end, and um, hopefully get that win.